I'm gonna make sure that if you've got an internet connection, you're gonna have everything you need to teach your dog absolutely free. Help us continue to raise the bar in what it truly means to teach dogs. I'd like to add even more content to this channel. If you'd like to help us with that, I'll have a link in the description where you can help out. And to say thank you to those of you that do support us over there, we've got some fun rewards like signed Frisbees, even signed copies of my book. Thank you so much. One of the most common questions about puppies is, when do you start training them? Today, Flurry, the lab puppy, and I are going to tell you everything you need to know. Click thumbs up for Flurry. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel for all sorts of free dog training videos. And pick up a copy of my book, Dog Training Revolution. You can either read it or listen to it now. The book is a great companion to these videos. So how old should your dog be before you start training? The fact is, you can start training a dog at absolutely any age. There is zero truth to the myth you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But if you're asking Asking this question, there's a lot more you need to know. From the moment you get your dog, regardless of their age, you should be teaching them. Ideally, the youngest you would get a puppy is at about 10 weeks old. That's a perfect time to start training, but so is 10 years. The relationship you have with your dog is going to be the foundation of all of your future success with them. Your very first priority should be to bond with your dog, and if you do that, the communication between you two is going to blossom. Today, Flurry and I are gonna show you several great ways to emphasize trust, build a strong relationship, and build communication with one another. We got some work to do, don't we? <laughs> a couple of days ago, I had Flurry over here, and I noticed that he was a little nervous about going down the stairs. Because I know he could be nervous about these stairs, I'm gonna seize this opportunity to build some trust with him. And that's one of the cornerstones of teaching any dog. Now, for safety reasons, we're gonna start here at the bottom of the stairs. That's probably gonna be a lot less daunting to Flurry. Remember, your dog has some say in how fast training should be as well. So, for example, if Flurry decides that today isn't the day where he's comfortable to learn how to go down the stairs, I'm going to accept that. I'm gonna make sure that Flurry doesn't fall down the stairs, so I'm gonna secure him on his leash and harness here, and I've got some great treats that he really loves. I'm gonna see if I can just lure him down one step. See, he's a little reluctant there, you see that? Doesn't wanna take that step. You can understand, I mean, it's gotta be a little weird. Why is the ground changing level? Right there, he just lifted his foot. I love that he's trying there. Look, okay, all right, that's one interesting loophole. I'll take it. The fact is, he's engaged with me. He's trying right now. Plus, I want him to know that I'm here. He can trust me and that he doesn't need to worry about falling and I'm not gonna let anything bad happen to him. You wanna go this way? Okay, hey, he made it somehow to the next stair. Yes, good job, buddy, very good. So he's made it from one stair to the other, albeit a bit unconventionally, but that's okay, I'm not picky. Remember, the bigger picture here is we're emphasizing trust between one another. I'm gonna make sure I'm here to support him. Yes, look at this, guys. Yes, good job. So he's handled a couple of stairs there. Now let's see if we can get him to go all the way down to the ground. Yes, good job. We'll give him an extra big reward there. Let's try it a bit faster. Yes, right away, just like I thought. Yes, I think he's learning the stairs wonderfully. Yeah, good job, really good. So I'm, I'm just thrilled with that. You can't ask for any better than that. That's great, good job, Flurry. Part of knowing when it's the right time to teach your puppy is being able to read them. If you notice that your dog isn't particularly enthusiastic about learning something new, then that might be your cue to take a step back and be a little bit more patient when working with them until they're feeling a little more comfortable. Why are you biting my hand, ouch. All right, now that we're down here, let's have some fun. By far, the fastest way to get your dog to bond with you is to get them playing with you, and that's not just my opinion either. A study done on the physiological effects of human-animal interactions has shown that levels of the bonding hormone, oxytocin, increase for both the human and the dog during interactions like this. When your puppy is having fun, good things happen. This may not look much like training, but actually this is one of the most powerful things you can do to get your dog eagerly excited about you. Remember, the two raw ingredients for teaching a good game of fetch are chase and tug of war. Come on, let's go, look at that. And right there, we just got him to do his first fetch. That was great. And just look at his body language. You can tell he's having a blast right now. Look at that. Make sure you let him win a little bit. He'll be a fetching machine in no time. Since every puppy will have different needs, you should make sure that you talk to your vet about the level of exercise that's safe for your puppy as he grows. But as a general rule, the younger your puppy is, the more careful you need to be. Flurry, that was excellent. Now I think it's time to go inside and play a brain game. Whoa, come on. All right, let's see if we can go up the stairs. Yeah, good job, you did it. When you have a dog as young as Flurry, you're not gonna have a ton of mutual communication yet. 
So how do we begin to build communication with a dog who's had little to virtually no training at all? Well, I know that Flory likes to play and I know he likes food. So let's see if we can use some treats to build some more sustained interest in interacting with me. As important as exercise is lots of mental stimulation for your dog. So we're gonna play a little game with Flurry. There we go. <laughs> I knew that would wake you up. Now we're gonna put the treat right here. And I'm gonna cover it up right there and let's see if he can figure out where the treat went. This is gonna be interesting. What's this? Here we go. And hey, nice work, bud. And he found the treat. This is a great game for teaching him how to brainstorm. We're gonna put the treat there, cover it up. There you go, good work, that's nice. Now let's see if he puts two and two together here. I'm gonna put a treat inside of here and just do that now and let's see if he figures it out again. Uh, this is kind of on the right track, maybe? Ah, uh, there's the treat, you got it. All right, Chunky Burrito, you ready to do this with two cups now? Now let's see if he can do it with both of them. Okay, well, he seems to have forgotten about the treat here and he seems to prefer the cup. As long as he's having a good time, I'm happy. Now, it might look like Flurry's just getting treats, but what else is happening here? Look, he's engaging me. He's interested in working with me right now. Whenever your puppy is paying attention to you like this, it's a golden opportunity. And I don't wanna squander that. I wanna seize that opportunity to really build some communication with him. By playing a simple game like this, you're increasing your overall bond and communication simultaneously because you're teaching your puppy that looking at you can make his life awesome. And since he's paying attention to you, that probably means he's receptive to learning new things. Give Flurry a thumbs up if you think he did a good job. Thank you so much to our patrons who made this video possible this month. And also make sure you're subscribed to my channel and pick up a copy of my book for the most thorough dog training experience that I know how to give. Good job, Flurry. You did a great job.